Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you the secret to getting your reverb to sit perfectly inside your mix. We're gonna be talking about vocal reverb today, but before we dive in, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the vocal mixing process and perfect your EQ strategy, then I have just the thing for you. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ, and it's a simple PDF that will walk you through EQing your vocals step by step to get you polished and professional sounding vocals without any more hassle. It is completely free and you can download the guide using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at this vocal. Now I'm gonna be building out this uh, reverb strategy with you here today, uh, step by step. So currently on this mix, here's our lead vocal. We're just sending to one plate, re plate reverb here. So let me show you what this sounds like uh, for this verse going into this chorus section. Take a listen. Maybe I was just a summer catch, or maybe I'm the real fool for getting left on red. I've been running and running, and I've been chasing her around, but I can't pin this little dragon down. She gives me half of a sign, she wants me in her life, but I can't help thinking that I'm wasting her time. I'll never be the man she needs, so say my goals. Now it doesn't sound bad, it's a good sounding reverb, it's nicely balanced inside the mix for our verse and our chorus, but say we wanted more reverb in our chorus, or a bigger sound in our chorus, and a more intimate sound in our verse, we didn't want that reverb in our verse. Now we could go in, we could do a bunch of automation tricks here, right? We could pull the reverb down in our verse, and then ease it up in our chorus, and maybe go longer with it in our chorus, and shorten it in our verse, but instead of having to deal with uh, automating one reverb and automating the volume on it, automating the tail or the length on it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two different reverbs. So I'm gonna disable this reverb here and we're gonna pull in a completely new reverb. So I'm gonna create two bus channels here and I'm gonna call one verse verb and I'm gonna call the other chorus verb. This way, for our verse section, we can create its own reverb, and then for our chorus section, we can tailor a reverb to that sound. I'm gonna send both of these to my mix A, color them white, because that's what my effects channels are colored. And we're gonna start here with our verse verb. We'll start, we'll pull over, same room reverb, and I usually like to throw an EQ after my verbs, so we'll pull this EQ over and activate it. Just a simple EQ that rolls off the highs and lows. Uh, that way things don't get too muddy or too airy up top. For my verse section, I'm gonna pick a shorter reverb. We'll go with the medium studio here. So this is about uh, 750 millisecond to one second reverb. So something a little bit shorter or medium length. Let's send our lead vocal to this and level it out for our verse section here. So a shorter, a tighter reverb for our verse section because it's a little bit more sparse in our arrangement. So we can make things a little bit more intimate by using a shorter reverb here. So like I said, this is the medium studio reverb, about 750 to uh, 750 milliseconds to one second reverb. So shorter, medium reverb. And then we've got an EQ after it rolling up everything below 200 so it doesn't get too muddy or low end heavy. And then we're just rolling off 10K and above so things aren't too airy up on the top end. What we're gonna do next here 
is add a reverb for our chorus section. So if we listen right now, going into our chorus section, our chorus vocal is probably gonna sound pretty dry and it's gonna be too subtle for our chorus section. So let's take a listen here. So we get a tiny bit of depth from it, but it's pretty subtle, it's pretty transparent when we get into our chorus and the other instruments come in and it gets a little bit fuller. What we're gonna do for that is we're gonna use our chorus verb. That way we can keep our verse tight and intimate, we can tailor a vocal reverb for our verse section, and now we can tailor one for our chorus section. So we're gonna pull over, same reverb settings here, and then we're just gonna change the, the reverb. I'm gonna use, We'll use the recital hall. So this is about a two second reverb. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the pre-delay because I don't want any pre-delay on it at the moment. Uh, we're gonna leave the EQ on there, so rolling off our lows and highs. And we'll send from our lead vocal to our chorus verb now. Now we're gonna set our chorus verb in our chorus section here. So I'm gonna mute our background vocals here for the minute. And let's, let's bring in our, our chorus verb here. You can see now we have some nice tail and nice depth on our chorus section. But the thing here is now, let's go back to our verse section and see what we're sounding like with the chorus verb in. So for our verse section now, our chorus verb is a little bit too much, makes our verse section a little bit too wet, a little bit too deep, too much reverb there. So what we can do here is we can take our chorus verb and create an automation lane for it. Uh, we don't want that to be, yeah, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go for our verse section here. And we're gonna go for our automation lane for our chorus verb and we're just gonna pull our chorus verb down. We'll pull it down, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 dB. So now let's listen to our verse section here. Now what we have is we have our verse section tight and intimate, a little bit less reverb, a reverb tailored to that section, right, shorter. And then we have our chorus verb that jumps up for our chorus section. So a longer reverb, a little bit bigger of a sound. It's a hall reverb as opposed to a room reverb. So for our verse section, we have our room reverb going here. So this is our verse verb. So it's a little bit higher in the mix because uh, it's a little bit tighter, a little bit shorter. And then we have our chorus verb here, which is longer. It's our hall reverb, sitting at about two seconds. 
And for our chorus, we have it at nine, nine and a half dB down. But then for our verse section, we automate it down about 12 dB. You can tuck it back however far you want just to make sure it's not stepping on our verse section. And all we would do is go through for our, our whole song and just tuck back, tuck back our verse section, excuse me. Now another interesting thing we could do here is we have that nice little tail that comes off our verse into this break section. I kind of like that. So what I want to do is I want to automate that up. So instead of being a hard jump up for our chorus, now we have a nice ease up on our chorus verb. So maybe it'll bring up some of that, that tail on that last line. Let's take a listen here. I like that. I like the reverb coming up a little bit. It gives a little bit more tail, a little bit more depth to that last line, fills in the space in that break section. So let's review here, making sure your re reverb sits perfectly inside your mix in every section. What we're doing here, creating two buses, our verse verb and our chorus verb. For our verse verb, we're using a shorter reverb, a medium studio, so a room sound. We're setting about 750 milliseconds to about one second, so medium sized verb there. Then for our chorus section, or our chorus verb, we're using a longer reverb. This is a hall reverb, about two seconds in length or so, and we're not using any pre-delay there because we, we want it to happen at the vocal. Sending our vocal to both of these, setting our levels appropriately, so our verse verb in our verse, chorus verb in our chorus, and then all we're doing is we're automating our chorus verb down in our verse, so we keep our verse tight, we keep it intimate, and then our chorus, as the production builds, our chorus reverb comes up and makes our vocal a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger for our chorus section. I hope that was helpful for you. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your vocal mixes to the next level and really dial in your EQ strategy, then I have just the tool for you. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ and it is completely free and you can download it below and start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.